The other sub-Q injection that you can do would be heparin. So I'm going to then, of course, make sure I check my MAR to make sure that it is due. Heparin 5,000 units sub-Q. I'm going to then pick the medication, 5,000 units, perfect. I'm going to take my chart with me to check to my patient and perform ADIT. Mr. Smith, my name is Erin. I'm going to be your student nurse today. We're going to be giving you your um, heparin, which is um, a sub-Q injection. Which heparin is just a low-dose blood thinner that helps prevent blood clots while you're in the hospital with us. Um, it just takes a few minutes, maybe five, five minutes total, to get the injection and everything ready to go. You will feel a little pain just with the injection itself. And heparin does burn a little after, after we inject the medication. Any questions? No? Then we're going to go ahead and continue. So make sure you raise, um, you can position your patient or you can come back. We're going to perform our check again to make sure that we have our 5,000 units. I've got the correct needle. So I have a 3 mil syringe with a 25 gauge needle and a 5 8 inch long needle. Wash my hands, put on gloves. My MAR says 5,000 units sub Q. I'm going to open and clean the top of my vial. I'm going to then open my needle and connect them. Making sure that they're twisted together tight and throw all my packaging away that I don't need. And then when I'm uncapping my needle, always pull away from me. And 5,000 units sub-Q, I'm going to check my label. It says 5,000 units per ml, so that means I'm going to draw up one milliliter. So one milliliter of air. The top of my vial is cleaned already. I'm going to inject and draw up. One milliliter. I'm going to draw just a little past due to the fact that I have a little air bubble in there. All right, I've got my one. I'm going to tap to make sure. I'm going to then scoop my needle or my cover. cover. I'm going to then get my patient ready. So for heparin, um, per CHI's policy where I work, we are only allowed to give heparin in their abdomen. So you're going to let your patient know that you're going to clean their abdomen and you're going to use the sides of their abdomen. Um, heparin leaves little bruises, so if your patient's been getting heparin injections for a couple days now, you're going to see where those bruises are and try to split it up. Or ask your patient itself, Mr. Smith, which side did they give your heparin injection on earlier today? They'll say his left side, so then I'm going to give his right side to try to spread it out so that we're not continually just bruising one side of his abdomen. You also need to stay away from about one inch from the belly button just to make sure we avoid their nerve that's running through there, okay? Again, when we clean for our abdomen, you're going to clean um, spiraling out with an alcohol swab. I'm going to let it dry. I'm not going to fan over the top. I'm not going to blow on it. I'm going to then make sure that I get a good pinch. Um, if it is a smaller person, get as much fat tissue as possible. If it is a regular sized person, go ahead and do a two inch pinch just like you were for your insulin. I'm going to go ahead and go in at a 90 degree angle since I got to have a good pinch. If it's a smaller person, I can go in at a 45 degree angle, just depending on how much fat tissue I can get. I'm going to go ahead and go in. On the count of three, Mr. Smith, one, two, three, straight in like a dart, and go ahead and inject, and then remove, and activate my safety. I'm going to blot the extra, and for heparin, since it tends to bleed a little bit, you can put a band-aid over the top, um, just as a precaution. That way they don't have any blood marks or um, blood sp spots on their gown. That's it. And then make sure